When I was a kid, the war cry was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Right? Now the sex will kill you, the drugs you can't afford, the rock and roll just flat sucks. Where's the kid to go? This music. They come to this music. From time to time, I heard the deep rumble of men's voices rolling out into the dark from the porch. Sometimes the trill of my grandmother's or aunt's laughter joined in the men's rumbling, and it was pure accord, like sitting in church on Sunday listening to the four-part harmony of what a friend we have in Jesus. I heard what they were saying among the squeals and laughters as we chased one another around the dark yard just as free as magpies. After a while, we'd come up on the porch to listen to the stories. Daddy, please don't down in the old day for my dreams do come true sometimes, you know. How don't leave me, Daddy, please don't go away. Something bad sure will happen, please don't go significant things that ever happened in West Virginia as far as preservation of folk music and square dancing. Uh, and Dr. Patrick Gaynor, who started this festival in 1950, uh, he kind of got mad at the town and left and 
but the festival went on. And uh, this has been one of the few places where it was from, I can mean, kind of rephrase that. For many years, it was one of the few places where you could meet and play this kind of music. It was one of the, only, the only game in town was a folk festival in the 50s and 60s and up and even in the 70s. And uh, it's, it was a very, it's a very significant thing as far as the preservation of music is concerned. And I'm, I'm a firm believer in the, in the fact that I don't think traditional square dancing in West Virginia would have survived without this folk festival. I think an especially valuable part of the festival is the dancing that goes on each night down here at the uh, intersection. Because that's one aspect of the tradition that I think is kind of in danger of being lost. The square, the old time mountain dance tradition. It's a uh, the music tradition, I'm not worried about it dying out. I think there are plenty of good musicians coming up. The dance tradition, I'm a little more worried about it not being carried over by the next generation because you don't see a lot of young people dancing. And if they do, it's more modern styles of, of dancing. This one's different because the other ones are in campsites and kind of fairgrounds. And this one's downtown in a, in a little town. It's, it's a lot different, and I, I kind of like it more like this. This has always been the best folk festival in America. And the reason why is no one knows about it. Now, more people than ever do, and this may be the largest turnout I've ever seen at a folk festival. But for years, uh, the best part was it was us. We got together, play our music, uh, get to talk to one another. It's not bad. Uh, it's a very egalitarian thing. We, there are no stars in Glenville. Uh, and it's the only folk festival I know like that. Uh, most of the folk festival uh, is right here where we're doing this little uh, chat. Uh, it takes place in a parking lot. And there you go, pan the parking lot. And there's a lot more that the camera can't see. It's, it's, it's people playing the music, and it's not just one kind of music. You know, a lot of people uh, would think that something like this would be only old traditional tune. But old is relative, and, and, and people in the mountains have a tendency to play anything that they hear that they like. So it, it's not uh, hardly ever, it's not, a, it's not a, a, an archaeological experience. What I'm saying is that the tunes aren't old. We're playing them because there are tunes there now. And, and, and that's a beautiful thing about this festival. All the best players uh, approach it that way. <laughs>